Welcome to class number 10. Um, in the original Hebrew, Sefer, Sheva Mitzvah Hashem, we're in volume 1, and we are in the Mavoi, in the preface. Um, this would be the Divine Code. However, the English one doesn't have this entire uh, introduction, so we're learning it in the original. We are currently on page 48. And bottom of the page, this would be section Zion 7 in this Mavoy, in this preface. And the heading is, Isur Yisrael Lahachshil B'nei Noyach Mishum Lifnei Iver Umesayeya Oivrei Avera. The discussion today is going to be the prohibition for a Jew to cause a non-Jew, a ben noyach, to stumble, to cause them to transgress. And the problem with that would be the biblical prohibition of lifnei iver, which those are two words, and the, the, the verse states, lifnei iver lesitein michshoil, which translated means, in front of a blind person, one should not place a stumbling block. Um, which basically, it's very clear as far as another Jew is concerned, between one Jew and their fellow Jew. There's a clear prohibition, and it's discussed in um, Talmudic literature, in Jewish law. There's a clear prohibition for one Jew to cause another Jew to transgress, for the, uh, for the Jew to do something which would be forbidden, whether it's biblical or even rabbinic. <clears throat> so, for example, um, let's say, on could be many levels, but firstly, <clears throat> uh, for one Jew to um, give bad advice to another Jew. And because of that, the person either financially suffered or otherwise. So that's a prohibition. Even though the person could claim that, oh, I didn't know. And interestingly, that's why it says in that verse, after it makes that prohibition, it says, and you shall fear your God. Because this is something which, in essence, only the individual himself who gave this bad advice in this example, only he himself and, of course, his maker know the truth. Because the person could say, oh, I thought that that was um, a good business proposition. So in other words, a person might be innocent and could have really given what turned out to be bad advice with good intentions. And then the person is not transgressing at all. It all goes according to the intention of the individual. However, if he did mean to harm that person, then he is transgressing. Um, so that applies as far as causing the person, as I mentioned, financial loss. Or let's say that someone is advising someone else about uh, certain food. So, oh, you can go eat in this and this restaurant, for example. And it's not a kosher restaurant. That is transgressing leaf naiver. Whether the person is a kosher observant Jew, a law abiding, and they keep the dietary laws of kashrus, of eating kosher food, or whether the individual who's being given the advice, unfortunately, does not keep kosher, and does not care, still it is forbidden for the Jew to advise him or to tell him, even if he asks, says, look, I don't keep kosher, can you tell me where is the nearest whatever, um, you know, non-kosher restaurant, he may name it according to a, a chain name, whatever it may be, and you know the information, you say, oh yeah, I know, sure, half a mile away from here, right there, is this restaurant, you can't tell him. If you know or you suspect that his intention is he's actually going to go eat there, so then it's forbidden for one Jew to guide or to lead another Jew to do something wrong. And there are countless examples. Just one more example. On Shabbos, on the Sabbath. So it's forbidden for a Jew to desecrate the, Shab the, 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 the Sabbath. Very simple. And because of that, I'm not going to get into all the details now, but because of that, 
some are careful not to make certain um, celebrations or affairs on Shabbos. Generally speaking, Shabbos is a time for uh, bar mitzvah, when the 13-year-old you know, becomes obligated and they make a whole big uh, a party. They make a whole big festive celebration called a Kiddush. Some would avoid doing that if they know that many of the relatives or friends that are Jewish do not live nearby and are not Torah observant and would drive. So there could be a question of causing someone else to do a stumbling block. I'm not saying it's forbidden. I'm just giving it food for thought. How, this was all within one Jew and another Jew. That's very clear. The question becomes, though, what we're going to discuss now is, well, what about a Jew's interaction or involvement with a non-Jew with regards to the non-Jew's seven Noachite commandments? So is there a problem with a Jew causing a non-Jew to transgress? And Misayeya Oivre Aveira is a halachic term which means, it's another prohibition, of assisting sinners. You can't help someone um, transgress. So, for example, if there happens to be, God forbid, a murderer, and the murderer needs a weapon, and he comes to a Jew, and for that matter, to a fellow Ben Noyach, and he asks him, can you please sell me Give me, lend me, whatever the case is. That butcher knife that you have. And I know he's not a butcher. I know he's not going to chop meat. As a matter of fact, it's quite clear, or we have reasonable room to assume that he is going to, God forbid, murder someone. You're not allowed to assist him, and you can't sell him that knife. So even if I have a shop, I have a business, and I sell knives, I cannot sell to a person who I suspect is going to use it in such a way. That doesn't mean you're not allowed to have um, a business that sells weapons or guns because the assumption could be that it's for self-protection or as a sport. And you don't have to assume that if someone comes in there, he is about to commit a crime. But if you do know that, if the person is rushing and he says, I'm in a big rush because the police are on my tail and I'm about to get to the second bank today and I really have to have a good weapon, if he comes in telling me the story, I can't sell him uh, arms. Anyhow, so the question is, what about a Jew towards a non-Jew with regards to his mitzvahs? So we are on the bottom of page 48. <clears throat> the Jewish people are commanded. It's a negative commandment. It's a prohibition that the Torah states that before a blind man, you shall not put a stumbling block, which means if a person is lacking knowledge, he's blind, um, either literally, and therefore if a blind man is walking down the street, you cannot take any obstacle and put it there so that he trip and fall on his face. That's, that's the literal meaning of the verse, but obviously the verse is referring to anybody who is blind in any area. Um, so it's forbidden to put a stumbling block, which means that a, a Jew is commanded that he's not allowed to cause another to sin. And this is not only towards another Jew, but rather even with regards to causing a non-Jew to stumble by transgressing one of his seven commandments. As is explained, and it comes out from the Talmud and from the um, later codifiers. And in footnotes 80 and 81, respectively, um, they bring down the uh, sources. So they quote two places in the Talmud, Psachim, sorry, three places, Psachim 22b, Avedazara 6a, and Nedarim 62a. Those are the three places in the Talmud where we find that a Jew is forbidden to be the cause of a non-Jew to transgress his seven mitzvahs. And then in 81, it quotes from the Rambam, Maimonides, in the laws of Isuri Bia, Forbidden Relations, chapter 22, Halacha 6. And in the Tur, and in the Shulchan Aruch, in the Code of Jewish Law, section Yeridea, Simen Kuf Nun Aleph, 
Top of page 49. Hine. Behold. The Masechas Avedah Zara. In the tractate, in the Talmud of Avedah Zara, which, as mentioned, that's one of the three places, so on page 6b over there. Mivur, it is explained. The leka lav lifne iver, elabitrei evre de nahara. There is no prohibition of lifne iver, of before a blind person not to put a stumbling block, except for two sides of the river. I'm sorry. I take that back. Let's see, in the brackets. Kloimar, this means to say, in a, in a state, in a situation, Yeah, literally, it, it means two sides of, of, the, um, of the river. But basically, um, the sinner, or the potential sinner, cannot transgress without the assistance that he's going to receive. So only in that case, is it forbidden for a Jew to assist the uh, sinner? But if he could do it himself, and I'm just um, assisting in the sense of making it more available or something of that nature, so then it wouldn't be technically, biblically forbidden for the Jew. This is, again, the interaction between a Jew and a non-Jew. From one Jew and another Jew, that's a different story. We're much stricter. But as far as a Jew assisting a non-Jew or causing a non-Jew to transgress, so it's only if the transgressor, in this case the non-Jew, would not be able to do it without this assistance. That's biblically though. But if it's not in such a situation, meaning that the sinner on his own, he would still be able to succeed in committing this sin without the assistance of the helper, in this case, the Jew. Then there would not be a biblical prohibition on the Jew not to help this person. So, for example, the person can get to where he needs to go to transgress by taking public transportation, um, by taking a cab or a taxi or an Uber or whatever. Um, he can walk there. He's asking um, to make it easier. He's coming over to his Jewish friend and he says, can I borrow your car? And you know where he's going and why he's going there. He even tells it to you. In that case, biblically, the Jew would be permitted because all he's doing is just making it available now or making it easier or whatever. But it's not like the only way to get there is by helping him uh, across he would still be able to get there otherwise. So then, biblically, the Jew would not be transgressing. Umi kol and nonetheless, that being said, kasvu hapoiskim, the various different codifiers write, the asur midivrei soifrim, it's still forbidden, but on a rabbinic level. The rabbis decreed that a Jew, even in such a case, mustn't, assist. Mishum, what's the problem? If it doesn't apply to the verse of Lifne Iver Lesita and Michshoil that do not put a stumbling block before a blind person, so what's the problem? Mishum, because of Mesayeya Oivre Avera, assisting transgressors. Gam Hecha, also where the Yochel Achoite Lachte Bilade Siyua where the transgressor would be able to succeed in transgressing without the assistance from this uh, individual who's aiding him. All right? So it's biblically permitted. It is rabbinically forbidden. But again, in a case where without the Jew's assistance he wouldn't be able to do it, then it's even biblically forbidden for the Jew. So the various different early codifiers, known as the Rishonim, they write the Ika Isr Siyua that there is the prohibition of assisting even when it comes to Bnei Noyach. Um, let me clarify. Perhaps even with regards to a fellow Jew, 
it would the say the, the above mentioned would apply. In other words, this distinction that biblically it's only if the individual can't transgress without me, but rabbinic, even if he would be able to um, transgress without. Um, in other words, a fellow Jew helping another Jew to transgress would biblically only be transgressing or forbidden for the first Jew, for the aid, if the sinner wouldn't be able to do it without that assistance. However, if he could do it, and you're just enabling him right now or, or assisting, so then it could be that it's only rabbinic. And now we're taking that same position for the Jew assisting the non-Jew. And likewise, the implication is that this is also the opinion of the Ramban, Nachmanides, this is a fourth Rishon. In his, in his commentary on the Torah, on the verse, And you shall send her um, free, send her to be her own self. Meaning this is... Um, Speaking about the Eishas Yifas Toyar, which we've discussed at length in previous classes, um, the captive, the non-Jewish woman that was taken as a captive by the Jew, and he then has the option to marry her with all those details. Um, if at the end, though, he sends her free to go home, so the words in the verse are, and you shall send her l'nafsha, for her life, for her soul. And the Ramban, Nachmanides, says that you should not assist her in returning back to idolatry. If she, if, if she comes from an idolatrous um, family or, or nation or whatever, you cannot assist her in that. And likewise, another um, authority in Jewish law, another Paisek, also ruled the Osirli Yisrael that is forbidden for a Jew to cause non-Jews to stumble, and to assist them to transgress. Even in a case where there is no there isn't any biblical prohibition, like we said in two sides of the river, because the Jew is obligated to withhold them from transgressing, to separate them from sin. He's, he's not allowed to let them add to the seven mitzvahs, which is a whole discussion for itself, but the Tashba says that a Jew can't allow a non-Jew to add to the seven. So surely he can't assist them or allow them to transgress these seven. <clears throat> um, which let me just throw out um, one example. And again, I am not saying that this is clearly the ruling on a practical level, just something to think about. Let's assume for the moment that the symbol of uh, Christianity, that the cross, is Avedazara for non Jews, that it's forbidden for non Jews. Let's assume that for the moment. Now, Let's say a Jew is a jeweler, no pun intended, and he, sends all, he, send, he sells all sorts of jewelry. So he has the Star of David, the Magin David, which he primarily sells for Jews. And then he also sells a cross. So first of all, can he sell this cross for a Jew? A Jew who unfortunately is, is, is misguided or worse, and um, wants to wear the cross. There's no question about that. A Jew is not allowed to wear a cross. It is a forbidden symbol for a Jew to be associated with. There's no question that it's forbidden for the Jewish jeweler to sell that to a Jew. Question is, what about selling it to a non-Jew? Again, it, one not getting into uh, at the moment whether that is forbidden or not for the non-Jew. But assuming that it's forbidden for the non-Jew to wear a cross around um, their neck, so then can the Jew sell it to them, especially in the time of year where that's the season, around the end of December, and this is how he makes his money. Um, so if it's forbidden for a non-Jew to wear a cross, 
then it would be forbidden for the Jew to sell crosses to anybody. But again, that's just hypothetical or theoretical. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's practically, actually the law. And in addition to these earlier codifiers that we just went through, so too, it seems like this is the opinion of the Alter Rebbe, of Rebbe Shneir Zalman of Liadi, the founder and the first Lubavitcher Rebbe, the author of the famous, um, ba- most basic Hasidic book, the Tanya. And he also wrote his code of law based on the original Jewish code of law. So in the Alter Rebbe's code of law, in the laws of uh, stealing, it's pretty um, implicit that it's forbidden for a Jew to assist the Ben Noyach in stealing. And the reason is because the Jew is assisting this non-Jew to transgress the prohibition of stealing, which he's commanded. He's not allowed to steal. It's one of the seven misses Ben Noyach. So there we have it. And so too, it appears the, um, the simple interpretation of the various different poiskim in the tractate Nedarim 62b. There's a prohibition for a Jew to give firewood to idolaters for the sake of using it for idolatry. They're going to take this wood and they're going to use it on their altar which they're sacrificing sacrifices to some foreign uh, other gods. That, so it's forbidden for a Jew to give them that fuel. Elim kein tzarech l'hasaka. Now, in general, according to that Gemara, according to that Talmud, a Jew wouldn't be allowed to sell wood to an idolater unless you know that he needs it as fuel for his heating. And it's okay. Then just because that person is unfortunately an idolater, but I'm still allowed to sell him wood for him to use in his fireplace for to heat his home. Because in that case, the Jew is allowed to assume that he is buying these logs for his own heating purposes and not for transgression. The Kosvari Shainim, Taisvis Peshem Ram, Pirish Harosh, Hidushi Harashpa. Shum. And various different early um, commentaries right there. From here we derive that it is forbidden for a Jew to assist non-Jews, to assist idolaters, to build their houses of worship, where they're worshiping other gods. So a Jew is a contractor, a Jew is a plumber, and a Jew gets a call, uh, gets a call rather, from um, some institution which, again, it's very clear that that institution is an idolatrous one. It's, it's clearly worshipping other gods. Um, and he gets a call and he says that uh, they need their plumbing fixed. This would be the question. He's an electrician. But surely if he is a, um, you know, if we're not talking about the repairs in their bathroom, which then arguably you could say, well, the bathroom is not part of where they're serving any uh, other gods. Um, but how about if, he's, if it's part of the plumbing that he's involved in building it to begin with, or he's a contractor or an architect, then he surely cannot have any involvement and cannot take any part and can't take the job. But from this is implied that even merely assisting them is forbidden. And they didn't make any condition that it's only in that case where the person cannot transgress without this assistance. In any case, even if it's not the biblical prohibition of Lifen Iver, it's still forbidden because of um, assisting them to transgress. And likewise, the simple reading of the <coughs> Talmud in the beginning of the second chapter of Avedazara. 
it is forbidden for a Jew to place animals um, in the barn of uh, idolaters. And the reason is because those types of people um, are suspected of um, bistanomy. Um, and therefore, since that's forbidden, that's a type, of one of the Shev Mitzvahs B'nai Noyach, of um, having forbidden um, relations. So one of the things is that human beings are not allowed to have marital relations with animals. And since those people are suspected of doing that, so there would be leaf naiva for the Jew to supply them with any animals. And even though the Talmud gets into detail and gets technical and says there are a number of doubts in that case, one can argue that it isn't with any certainty that they're going to actually commit the sin with these animals that the Jew might be supplying them. Kigoyim, for example, Nekeva says in Nekeva, a female animal being given to a female idolatrist or a female uh, non-Jew. So then there's no real prohibition for her to lie with the female animal isn't really transgressing. So he still can't do it. Shema Yovoi v'shema Chulu because maybe a male will come. So it could be that her husband or father or son or someone will come and then they will commit this sin. So even though that's further removed this mm-hmm. suspicion. And likewise, this is the ruling in the Rambam as well as in the Jewish Code of Law. That it's forbidden for a Jew to uh, supply them with animals. Haray, so behold, the af b'makim safik ika israelif neiver. Even in a case where it's a doubt, we still see that it's forbidden for the Jew to assist. V'loy nirmas begemaru v'poiskim de israel lahamid behemav v'ntakoyt shalahem hanu rak asher ein behem acheres shom. The avi mamish kitrei every denara. And the Talmud does not say that this prohibition only applies when there is no other animal available for them there, which that would be like the extreme case where they can't do it without the Jews' assistance. It doesn't say that. As is clear in the um, first chapter of Avedah Zara, that in any case, the East lay Behemachriti lay Katrevri Dinara. As long as there's another animal available for them, that would not be the, the, the classic case that we gave where they need the Jews' assistance. They could still do it. And yet it's still forbidden for the Jew to supply them with an animal lest they use that animal for the sin. Because nonetheless, the, um, the non Jew will be able to find another animal to sacrifice. So again, it's possible so the animal could either be, either be used by them for sa- sacrificial purposes, which is forbidden, or as we mentioned, for uh, marital purposes, if you will, which is forbidden, of course. So it comes out clear that even without the Jew supplying them with these beasts, yet they would still be able to commit their um, sin and have relations with a different beast. Nonetheless, it's still forbidden for the Jew to supply it or to give them an animal. All right, however, he says, that was based on the first chapter in Avodah Zarah, in Avodah Zarah 6a. However, in the second chapter of Avodah Zarah, the implication there is that it's only forbidden with an animal belonging to the Jew. That's only where we're really concerned that they're going to do it. But if it's their own animal, then they wouldn't commit the sin, and therefore a Jew would be allowed to assist them in transporting their own animals, and we're not concerned that, oh, he's assisting them in getting hold of this beast, because that wouldn't apply. Mikol Malkim, nonetheless, Niril Anius Taiti, it appears in my humbled, humble opinion, this is this, um, Rabbi Weiner speaking, the author, he says, it appears to me, Pashut, that it's simple, it's obvious, Dezel Chshash Veloi Vadei Kol Kai Gavna, Velochein Loi Hevi Kitrei Evri Dinar Mamash, that it's only a concern, and it's not something which is with certainty. 
And therefore, it's not like those cases where they need the Jew in order to commit the sin. Okay, he, he puts it here in brackets, and it's just about one line, because he wants to make a certain point, and he would like to build the case that it is forbidden for the Jew. So he brought down all these opinions that either explicitly or at least implicitly are stating that it's forbidden for a Jew to help in any way a non-Jew to transgress. But in all fairness, he wants to give us a full picture, so he does, so to say, throw in over here the one opinion which does say clearly, uh, it's Rabbeinu Yoyna in the name of the Ramah, so these are Rishoinim, early um, commentary, commentaries, that he holds that there's no prohibition for a Jew to assist a non-Jew in transgressing. It's only a for, for, forbidden for a Jew to assist a Jew. So that's, there is such an opinion. Now we need to um, delve into this a bit deeply. <clears throat> Why? The Ramah, which is the, um, one of the primary um, it's authors of the Shulchan Aruch, it's the the secondary author, if you will, of the Shulchan Aruch, of the Jewish Code of Law. So the Ramah, Reb Moshe Israelis, in Yeridea 151, he brings down an argument, a dispute between the codifiers. Is it permissible for a Jew to sell to idolaters things which they need for their Avodah for their idol worship. Kigoin, for example, behemol akriva, oikteris, vichadoime, an animal for them to use as a sacrifice, or ingredients for them to bring uh, incense to Avodazara, uh, or the like. In a case where the non Jew can get it anyway, elsewhere. He can go down the block and go to the other guy, he can go to the non Jew and buy it. So am I, the Jew, obligated to withhold it from him? So that's a, a dispute. <coughs> the Ramah rules in, a, in lenient. And he makes the allowance. He says it is, for, it is permissible for a Jew to sell to a non-Jew who, something which he knows he's going to use or he needs for his um, idolatry. Now again, getting back to the example, <coughs> that doesn't necessarily mean that he can sell him a cross because that's worse than just something which he needs. That is actually something which in, its, in and of itself um, probably is forbidden. But we're talking about um, an animal that he's going to use as a sacrifice. So one of the main commentaries in the Code of Law, the Shach, he explains and he rules as follows, that the dispute that the Ramah brings down is only with regards to a Jew that has... Um, left the Jewish faith and has become um, a mumar, um, a, um, he's converted out and he is embraced Avaidazara. So such a Jew, that's where there's an argument as to whether another kosher Jew, if you will, is allowed to sell and supply him with his needs for his worshipping Avaidazara. But when it comes to a non-Jew, the Shach rules that everybody agrees that there's no prohibition for the Jew to, um, give, to assist him in this regard. Things which he can get otherwise. He can get them anyway. The Kasha. But now, Rabbi Weiner is asking on that, on, the, on this approach. It's difficult. Aleph. 
Harei lahar Rambam v'sayate. According to the Rambam and those that go along with him, Ika chiyuv. There is an obligation. There is a clear obligation. Likvaisam to force them. Ulahayraisam and to instruct them. Kiyum mitzvah about how to fulfill and how to keep their mitzvah of the seven. So according to the Rambam, surely it's forbidden for the Jew to assist them in transgressing. The Jew is obligated to force them and to withhold from them from sinning and to teach them how to keep their mitzvahs. So of course, according to that approach, it would be forbidden to help them in any which way, even if they can get their animal or whatever they need elsewhere. That's question. That's number one. So it seems like this Ramah and surely the Shach are not in accordance with the ruling of the Rambam. Base B. Then he's asking why was the Ramah in fact lenient when all of the above opinions that he just went through before him seem to clearly rule in the strict regard that it's forbidden. So why is the Ramah taking the lenient approach if he claims that it's an argument when seemingly the majority are being strict? Gimel number three. See. Now, the source of the Ramah for being lenient he, he said it's, it's, an, it's a, a dispute, it's an argument. Well, those that are lenient is the opinion of the commentary of Toisphus. Well, Toisphus happens to contradict himself from one place to the other. So the Toisphus that is lenient, however, there's the Toisphus in Nidarim 62, which is Strict, and then he brings a third Taisvis in Chagiga, tract in Chagiga 13, which also says that we, the Jews, have a mitzvah to instruct them in keeping their mitzvahs, like the Rambam. So clearly, we're not allowed to cause them to stumble. So he's asking now, it's really a problem with understanding the ruling of the Rambam in the Shulchan Aruch. Yes, the Rambam is being lenient, but how? So now, Rabbi Weiner continues. Venire, and it appears, the Ramah's ruling that we can be lenient and make an allowance for the Jew to sell the animal or what have you to the Nanja who's going to use it for Avodah that's only if it's a financial loss for the Jew. Because if he doesn't get the business and the Nanja will take it elsewhere, this Jew will lose. Oichshash Eva, or alternatively, another um, reason would be if there's a concern of um, animosity, that the non-Jew might get really upset with the Jew. You have a business and you're not selling an animal to me, you're going to sell it to the other guy, and you're going to sell it if, I, if, if you know that I'm going to use it for other purposes, not for this purpose. And again, that is because it's possible that a Jew will get harmed one way or another. So, in other words, if it's going to cause any type of um, harm to the Jew, financially or otherwise. So, in such a case, since there isn't an absolute prohibition, therefore, the Jew would be allowed to assist. So that the Jew would not suffer the loss. But to help them free of charge, with no gain, no benefit for the Jew, laver to transgress, osur mitzad acher. In any case, it's still forbidden. Top of page 52. There's another prohibition which you didn't even, we didn't mention in this section. And that is that the verse says, Do not allow the idolaters to have residence in the land of Israel. And that, that prohibition has various different levels to it. One of the 
applications of loy sechanim, or one of the interpretations of that word of do not tichanim, that it's forbidden for a Jew to give an Anjou, an idolater that is, a gift, free of charge. He can't give him a gift. It's forbidden for one Jew to give a gift, a present, to an idolater. So, you know, so then, then in that case, that of course it's forbidden. Or to assist a non-Jew to do a sin in any other way where there is no loss for the Jew. This the Rama did not allow. All right, so this is how he is suggesting over here to be able to explain the Rama. I mean, again, arguably one would open up the code of law and read the Rama they wouldn't necessarily come to this conclusion. They would say, no, it's, 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 it's simply permitted. But because of the arguments that we're making and because of the difficulty that we have, Rabbi Weiner is choosing to explain and interpret that the Ramah is more narrow than it seems. And it isn't just an open, uh, permissible situation where he's just being lenient across the board, but it's specifically, even though he doesn't say so, the Ramah, but it's specifically, if the Jew would suffer any loss, then in that case, in this particular case, where he's only assisting, it would be permitted. And in footnote 99, he, um, is, he, he elaborates a bit more about this and strengthens this point of his that he's saying over here. In the brackets. Venire, and it appears, Demasha onu asurim lesayom, that which we Jews are forbidden to assist the non-Jews, is no stricter than the initial prohibition upon them to do that very sin. Same thing. A non-Jew is not obligated to take away a stumbling block or to refrain from assisting another from transgressing where he would suffer a financial loss. So if a non-Jew is permitted to assist another non-Jew in transgressing in order that he not suffer a financial loss, so we Jews are not obligated to be any stricter than that. So the bottom line is, if it's a matter of a financial loss, and it's not outright assisting him in a way that without this assistance he wouldn't be able to do it. That's the extreme case. And that's not allowed, even in a financial loss. But if that's not the case, then the Jew would be permitted to sell the goods to the non-Jew. So getting back to the original example that we gave, the extreme case where someone comes running in and he needs a gun. And it's, I know clearly what he's about to do. He's going to transgress either the prohibition of murder or the prohibition of stealing or both. Um, so it depends. If he cannot get away with committing this crime without getting my assistance right now, because the police are on his tail and he will not succeed unless I assist him right now, then I, I'm not allowed to. However, if he can go to next door and buy the gun there, and it's just a matter of who's going to make the money, me or that guy, then, according to this, um, I would be permitted to make the deal to sell him. Uh, thank you very much, and until next time, may you all be well, and see to it to observe the Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noyach, and to promote them, and to uh, influence others, and bring about the world to its complete perfection with a complete revelation of our righteous Mashiach now.